back all it's uh for those of you who don't know me it's des from model road technique so with my 3d print business mrt scale prints i've had quite a number of people reach out to me particularly some of my cars on how you do window glazing so i thought great opportunity to do three techniques that i know of on the window glazing so what i'm gonna look at doing is there's the, the crystal clear method the clear acetate and also the sellotape method. So please reach out if, uh, tell me which ones you like the best or the least or are the most effective or others that you might have used would be also great to uh, to find out what people are doing out there. So, so also I'd like to give a big shout out to my patrons out there. Um, every little bit counts. I'll put a, obviously a link below to that. So um, also don't forget to subscribe, like, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. So without further ado, let's get started. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailwaytechniques.com What we're going to look at doing, we're going to add some glazing to this little Volkswagen. As you can see, there's a fair bit going on regarding the, the shape of the windows and the like. If I can get that into focus for you. So what I'm gonna look at doing is using a process with a product called Crystal Clear. Comes in a, a little one fluid ounce bottle. Um, it's quite cheap. Um, the consistency of this product is a little bit like Aquadir, but from my experience, it acts nothing like Aquadir. So you can see it's um, very similar in its consistency but definitely not its application. So also the other things we will look at needing is a, is a micro brush or a Q-tip or both. And I'll show you the reasons why we need those. And also some H2O and that will become apparent all very soon. So what I'll look at first doing to start with is just go in with a micro brush, just clean around to make sure we've got no particles there. So then we're going to get our Q-tip, sorry, our um, cocktail stick, and just grab a generous dollop on the sort of the end. Now what you need to look at doing is you sort of work it up in layers, and I sort of start in the corners, and you'll see this product sort of stretch. So you, you sort of see how it sort of comes off a little bit like mozzarella. So it's just a matter of going through to cover in that window. So you might find purely because the way I'm holding it, the glazing will start to sort of sink in towards the, the middle of the car. So it's just a matter of you sort of turn it on the outside here, like so, and just try to get it as, as even as you can. So this is where you come through with the, either the, the, the Q-tip or the micro brush. You obviously got some of the crystal clear on the outside. So it's just a matter of once that one's done, I'll go through and I'll do the next window. And I'll just keep going around the car. And it's as easy as that. And then I'll show you um, a little technique, probably for doing the windscreen. So odd shaped windows like this back window here. It's just a matter of you start in the corners you sort of try to work along the bottom to get a, a layer and then it's just a matter of stretching it up the best you can. Now this window you might have to go back in a few times, see how it just sort of just peels away. It's just a matter of just going through and sometimes you've got to come back to a window like this one I'll have to come back to. So what I'm going to do is I'll go onto the side windows again and I'll come back to that other window. So obviously doing it this way, this sort of replicates a window being fully closed, particularly the side windows, obviously in a winded car window. Um, I will show you an acetate way where you can have the window down. Um, it's probably be a little bit difficult, I would think, to replicate a window half down or half up, depending whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. And it's a reasonably quick process. And you can sort of see that, that back one that other side one I've just done. It's not too bad. Now, we'll go back to this back window. Now we've got this started to go off a little bit. It's just a matter of 
pulling it in like that. And then we'll go back through with our, our micro brush and we'll just clean the crystal clear off around the side of the windows. It will run a little bit until it starts going off. So you might need to do this process a few times, but it's a, a really neat way of doing windows. So what we'll go through now, always have a, a scalpel blade close by because with any 3D resin printing, you can always have some in, some impurities there. So it's just a matter of tidying all that up. Now exactly the same, you probably have to go in twice with the windscreen on this. So sort of starting from the edge, just jam a whole lot on the edge and then you just work it out. So you can sort of see you just build the layers. This one is probably gonna be easy to build working across and it's a it's a messy process but trust me it does work and it does look very nice so we'll just let that we'll sit that there just briefly we'll just let the the glue sort of settle and sort of take its own level and then we'll go back into it and and have another look and we'll do our final cleanup the um the crystal clear is now finally gone off you can sort of see that it uh, is quite translucent so what i'll do i'll just quickly so if you were to have a person in there you would you would be able to see them quite easily i think so that, that's that one down to a t now those windows have come up quite nicely quite flat and they they mold quite nicely to, to odd shape uh, windows like on the volkswagen here so the next technique we're going to look at doing is using some acetate or clear plastic so don't know how easily you're going to be able to see that. So that's actually quite a thin piece of acetate. And this is one that I have cut from some packaging from the supermarket. So on this particular occasion, I'm going to use the thinner one. It's just a little more pliable. So I'm going to look at doing one of my off-roaders. And I'll put a link below if you want to buy some of these little bad guys. So... What I've already done, I've already taken the liberty of slicing some of that up. So what I'm now going to do, I'm just going to get my squizzes and just cut it just a little more to size. Now I'm going to window that's a little, um, probably half down. So it's just a matter of to sizing up the window. Now what I might actually do is this one I won't do half down because what I can be able to do, I can actually do both those windows at once, which is quite handy. Beautiful. All right, so what we look at doing now is, I'll just put that down there so I can actually find it again now. Um, when you're doing any sort of window glazing using acetate, use some sort of white glue, um, whether it's the crystal clear again, or I'm actually using some Elmer's tacky glue. If I can get that in focus. Uh, I'll put a link back to below also. So it's just a, a matter of getting in here and just gluing up. Because what you do, if you don't use some sort of white glue, um, and you go through with CA glue or something a little bit stronger, what it actually does is it makes the windows cloud over quite significantly. So what it's a matter of doing, it's just a matter of now I've glued sort of the other side of that, that window frame. It's just a matter of sliding it in. So doesn't matter if you actually get some glue out on the window here because it will dry clear but just for the, for the sake of this demonstration now I don't know how well you can see that I'll just try to glimmer it in the light it actually comes up quite nicely so what I'll do I'll quickly do another one on the other side and I'll show you what it looks like when a window is slightly down obviously with one like this if you're going to do the window down, you'd have to redo that one, um, that little quarter window at the front there. But that shouldn't matter too much. So I'm just cutting off just off camera here quickly. Same deal again, just go through. Just get a little bit of glue in there. You probably, don't, sorry, you don't need along the top edge because we're not doing it along the top. We're going to do emulate a window that's uh, partially down. So what I've done here is just going in there, just going around the window frame, just from the bottom half though. 
Right, so I just had to do that off camera. That was a little bit fiddly, that one. So all I've done is same thing. You just put it back there, um, but you can see that window I've got down a little bit. So you could make a quite a nice little scene, and because I've done this on the driver's side, um, you could have the driver with his arm hanging out. Very obviously, very Aussie. So the last one I'll show you will be the windscreen. And yet again, if I can get that into some sort of focus. I'll just slide that in there for the windscreen. Now I did get a little bit of glue on that one, but as I said before, it's not going to matter too much. Purely because it will dry clear. So what I'm doing here, I'm just adjusting it. I've just got it brought the window down just a fraction too low. So there is the, the finished product. So um, for, for basic windows like that, I think the acetate actually looks really, really nice because if you was just, I don't have a person currently here, but you can actually see that through. So if you had a, an individual or a little, a little person sitting in there, you'd be, be all good. Obviously where it comes a little bit more difficult is these windows around the back here that, that, that wrap around. So that's probably where I'd go back through and use the, the crystal clear technique that I've already explained. And this back window, you could do clear acetate as well. So the second technique we're gonna look at is using the sellotape, which I understand is been around for quite a number of years. So I'll just see if I can get that, just the angle on the light here. I've done this side window. Just play around with the studio light here just quickly and see if I can get it to, so you can just see it there. So what you're doing is you put a film of um, just normal everyday sellotape on the roll. Now I've taken it off the applicator because what I was finding is that puts some very annoying lines on it. So just whilst we're on that, when you're taking it off the, the roll, just be make sure that you pull probably more off than you need because you get fingerprints on it and obviously the natural oils on your fingers it will ruin the effect so what it's uh, a matter of doing is i've got one i prepared earlier overlaying it on the window with a little bit of overlap and then just coming through with the side of the blade and just pushing it pushing it down you could probably do this either on the inside or the outside but I could see the inside being quite difficult. So it's just a matter of, this is gonna be quite hard to show, is just a matter of then cutting around the window the best you can, as close to the window frame as you can with a nice fresh blade without cutting your fingers is the next thing. And I just might come through and I'll cut that back. Another tool that might come in handy here is some squizzes. And we'll just cut that over the top, like so. Little squizzes, what I use for deckling from Micromart. This is a nice, nice um, sharp blade. It, this sellotape pulls away quite easily. Very delicate top frame of the window, so it's probably gonna be easier. I'll go through and back through with the squizzes. And I'll just cut that off the, the best we can. So my understanding is, um, it's gotta be, be dependent on the type of sellotape that you use, I would think. Um, some of the guys, like I just recently saw a show by Ken Patterson, where Michael Buddy, who obviously not sure whether he pioneered this technique, but definitely uses it. He said he's got no yellowing of the tape over the years. It's on the back side of this window. If it wasn't sealed, it'd get um, obviously dust and all sorts of grub in there. So, so that's the, the end of the tutorial. So three methods there that I've done. So method number one is the crystal clear. Method number two is the clear acetate. And method number three is the sellotape. So, just reaching out, I've actually done, since recording this, I've done some more research on the sellotape method. And there's not a lot out there, so I don't actually know whether I'm actually doing it properly. 
So if anyone has got any ideas on how to do it, please link below. So I suppose I pose the question to you, which which technique do you like using or which one do you think uh, looks the best? It's going to be one, two or three. I personally like one and two, particularly a utility like this. I think both of the, uh, the methods one and two work really, really nicely. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.